Hi, friends. This is a story about a girl named Lucky. I'm feeling lucky. That's my Britney Spears impersonation. <laughs> I mean, what's not to love about Britney, right? Yep. Oh, there's Nick. Hey, everybody. Hey, Goliath. Hey, Fran. So many of my faves are here. <gasps> there I was is. just living. Isn't she so lucky? No, so lu I'm so lucky because you're a star. That's I wait. Is. First of all, I am so excited we're doing this. I feel like this is our first like serious yeah. conversation. I know. I know because well, one of the questions is like, how did we meet? But we don't really know each other outside we, of Instagram. Do you know so many people have been like, so I so, like, who's this guy? What are you doing tonight? You're going live with you? I go, <laughs> Jim Lanahan. And like the best is like, I must have practiced saying your name like through I'm like Jim Lanahan, Jim Lanahan, Jim Lanahan and friends. And the best thing I left about everyone's like, how do you know him? I'm like, you know, I go, me and Jim, we've known each other through Instagram and have loved each other's content. And I've just always talked about how much we just love, I think, the light and vibrancy we bring to the world. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And it, that's literally what I fell in love with first on your page was just the light that shines out of you. But I have to tell you, it turned into like, because, you know, I'm a New Yorker, even though I live in L.A. now. So Wait, so are you from where? It's, it's so funny because I really don't even... I, where are you from originally? I was born in uh, Schenectady, New York. Oh, so she's so in I'm New York. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, but I lived in New York for twenty years, and I produced Broadway shows, among other things. Yeah, so I'm in New York for work. I will literally be in Hell's Kitchen, passing like the grocery store where I know you go, and I'll be like. Um, I wonder if I'll see Nick here. Like, oh I my God! And then I used to do. Oh my God! What was it? The D'Agostino. I used to do the contestants. <laughs> so Let me funny. tell you, D'Agostino. <laughs> I don't know who is doing their advertisements. I used to say to myself, I should be in their advertisements. I could sell this ice cream way more than this like five-year-old girl that's spilling the ice cream on the table and looks like a twit. But what you would do that is so brilliant is you would like, so they have this ridiculous picture, right? And then they're like, ice cream, $3.99. And you would make fun of it in the most oh, brilliant Oh, there'd be a do. story behind the, yeah. the picture and the moment. Like, like, what is she thinking in her head as she took this picture? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's hilarious. So listen, my producer's telling me that you're hearing two of me, maybe? Or am I hearing two of me? Um, tell me, I mean, I, I hear one of you. Oh, okay. Good, good, good. Stephanie, shoot me a message if it hasn't fixed. My executive producer, Stephanie Lappin, she's always I in love the background it. Stephanie, hello, hi, hello, you, bye. We are, <laughs> honestly, we all need a Stephanie, trust me. She, she Let me tell shit. you, I will say this. So, you know, I created this workout, The Real Gay Garage, as you've seen, which yeah. is my own little, like, virtual at home workout, I'm in East Hampton at my boyfriend's house. And, you know, I, I work in fitness, so everyone's like, why aren't you doing a workout? So we created this workout and, you know, everyone's like, it's amazing, but you need a mic. You need to invest in a mic. And then I finally, I got the mic today in the mail and today was all troubleshooting. And let's just say it just didn't go that well. And it gives me the anxiety and just all this virtue. You know, I think we're all new to this virtual world. Yeah. And and it's like I've I've really learned in this moment is that it's not perfect. It's not gonna be perfect and let go of perfection and just roll with the punches. Yeah, I know, right? But right? it's really hard because I don't know how you feel about it, but my O C D has gotten me really far in this life. Oh totally. So to I'm, with, I'm with you. It's yeah. it's very like when you know that a product can be better and it's not, it's like I'm and that's what like here I am thinking, okay, like we did the first couple workouts. I, my first workout, I ran in from the garage crying hysterical to my boyfriend. I'm like, I did it. This was a dream of mine. I always wanted to like create my own workout and be able to teach it. And like, like 70 people showed up to the Zoom workout and I was like, oh my God. And then, okay, you think, it's like you can never just be content. We're all about how can we make it better? What's right. the next step? And then, you know, like everyone loves to give an opinion. 
as yeah. we all know. And everyone's like, you know, it's great, but you could do this. Or it's great, you can do that. So uh, today was a very, today was kind of a, a low day, but I feel like I came out on top in the sense that it was a learning experience. And I think that's, you know, everyone's right now going through these learning experiences about their own experience dealing with this mm -hmm. moment in time, as Whitney Houston would say. Well, we all have one moment in time. That's what she would say. But I think what she didn't say, but I think Whitney knows this based on her real life. We all are allowed to fuck up too. So we'll- Hell <laughs> yes. I mean, I've seen some Whitney fuck ups, okay? Oh my God, some major. Remember that reality show on Bye -bye! TV? Bye -bye! <laughs> and like, she used to wear the Von Dutch hats. I used to yeah. live for it. Bobby, Bobby Christina. Brown. Bobby Brown reached in her butt and pulled out a piece of poop. Do you remember that? Yeah. Oh my, it's just like, I'm like, Whitney, what? you know, and I was so like, I don't know if you saw the other day. So I do the movie night Mondays where I love to just pick a movie and I say to everyone, you know, you don't have to watch with me, but maybe it's just something that you want to see. And I've, I, as a, I feel terrible saying this. I shouldn't say as a gay man, I guess as a man in general, but I've never seen The Bodyguard. Oh my gosh. And I watched it the other day for the first time. And so one of my best friends, Anthony French and I, who just graduated at NYU, just got Congrats, a master's Fran, in social work. as Talk you call him. him. Yeah, it's amazing. Amazing stuff. Um, he, you know, he loves like Run to You by Whitney Houston and like, and in like Queen of the Night. And I'll be like, oh, like, where is that from? He's like, have you, he's like, Nick, the bodyguard. I'm like, I haven't seen it. And they're like, what do you mean? And I watched the other night. The best is my boyfriend kept asking, he's like, are you watching this? Are you asleep? I go, I am enamored. I go, this is so incredible. This is so amazing. The queen of the night when she comes out in the look. Amazing, right? Amazing. I, I was for it. Yeah, yeah. I know. I worked on the musical, too, which toured but never came to Broadway. But uh, and Deborah Cox played Rachel. And uh, um, yeah, crazy, right? Crazy, crazy, crazy. That story is amazing. When she runs across that tarmac, and you hear, I want to run to you, and then she oh my her legs around him? Come on. I'm dead. The, and it seemed, so my boyfriend told me that originally, apparently that part was for Madonna. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I was like, and I, I was like, this would have been a whole different story. I'm like, this was made for Whitney. And just the, I mean, the music is just so, there is nothing like, I'm sorry, a Whitney Houston song. I mean, totally, totally. And um, I love Madonna. Okay, I'm a gay of a certain age. I it's, love Madonna, but the bitch can't act. She can't act. So there's the movie. I always forget the name of it. Where like she, there's a tiger in it, and she's young. She's like platinum blonde, short hair, and there's like you know, Mr. Chapman. Well, I don't know. She talks like that, kind of like. I loved her in that movie, and then it's funny though, because so I've been one of my favorite things during this moment has been I've been gathering so much music. Just like from my boyfriend, from life. And I've been like, I went on a Madonna, like major scenario. And the Madonna Avita, I was into it. Yeah, I agree. I feel like at Avita, they must have done every scene like 58 times. And oh, then so she really the best. You know what I mean? Oh my God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ma Madonna. General, okay. Wait a minute. I love Madonna. I love it. I, Hello. I, when she's two Which, hours late. I stand there. I wait. I love Madonna. That's. I do hear that she does the two hours late, but also, which I just recently watched, A League of Their Own. Yeah. yeah. Another. And hello, closing down, closing down, so I can have some. I, she's like, I'm not going back to taxi dancing. <laughs> so good. Oh my God, Jim, I, we need to, you know, my brother lives in LA. I know, his name is Dan, right? Dan, he's in Silver Lake. Yeah. And next time I come, we Yo, are going out it. for drinks. Yes, oh, I would love it. And also, um, y'all went to Palm Springs last year? Uh, year before last? The best. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm 46, but I want to retire. Well, like, Dan, you look fabulous. Well, it's a little Botox and, you know, fat don't crack. And what, what do you mean? No, no, no. It's, it's all the skincare, all the skincare. All those facials, so to speak. All right, listen, we haven't even started the questions. I know. I honestly, I could talk with you for five days straight. Like, I just think you're fine. Do you know, like, the best is when you sent me your videos, like, I was playing them. My boyfriend's like, this guy is so nice. I'm like, I'm like, I feel like I know Jim. I feel like 
we are best friends. We yeah. are like virtual best friends. I know. Well, and we'll, we, let's talk about that quickly because the thing about it is you and I both have a similar style. We are first person right into the camera, right? Mm. So everybody on Instagram, they feel like they really know us. And we also do something else where we reciprocate it. So like I wrote you a note two years ago and you were like, yeah, exactly, thanks, see you soon. Like you were like, boom. And, and so when you have that and you develop that, people feel like they know you. I, I will say it's, you know, if, if I ever, you know, like, especially now with Instagram, everyone's like, oh, the algorithm and this, and you need to have your engagement, you have to engage. My thing is like, if someone sends me like a sweet message or a message, I am gonna, I would always write them back because I just think yeah. that's so sweet. And, and honestly, I feel like, I guess, I don't know if it was you who sent me a message, but I just remember like seeing some of your videos, I was like, these are absurd and I'm obsessed. <laughs> and I think that's what sometimes people are like, I, and I think it's just you being you and me being me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my God, Lori Cole. Oh my God, Lori Cole. She's a master instructor at Soul Cycle. She says hello. I love that. Royalty She's in the me. house. She is fierce AF. Elsie in the house. Love that. Welcome, Lori. All right, so we'll get started officially. There's a little theme music. Welcome to Jim Lanahan and friends. So it's the same 10 questions. Everybody gets the same questions. No Woo! right answers, no wrong answers, and then we'll just have a little kiki. All right? I love it. So question number one. Don't you love a sound effect? Right? <laughs> Wait a minute, is that from SVU? Of course it is, of course. Yeah, I mean, I didn't ask for permission. I just decided to use it, you know? It's a, use it, use it and abuse it. I love it so much. I can't, it's my favorite thing in the world. Uh, question number one is, what is your name? Where did you grow up? Where do you live now? All right, my name is Nick Spadaro, AKA the real Nick S. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am originally from Long Island. I grew up in Long Island, you know, born and raised, and then I've lived in New York City. And now I'm currently back in Long Island in East Hampton at my boyfriend's house. I love it. And you're there for quarantine or are you gonna- I, be I have been here, since, so it's, it's actually really funny. So March 15th was the last day I was in the city and you'll, you'll just, I'm, gonna, I'm summing up really quickly. So I'm a soul cycle instructor. Mm -hmm. I taught a Britney Spears theme ride in Chelsea at the studio. I went to lunch with about 10 gays. Then I went to the Leatherman to get <laughs> harnesses, some, some other fun things. We'll leave it at that. Exactly. Yeah. Wink, wink, wink. And custom leather pants. And then my <laughs> boyfriend was like, we need to get out of the city. We need to go. We need to go to my house. So we literally like packed our bags got Shake Shack, got on the Jitney, and I've been out here ever since. Wow, my god! And let me just say this, I haven't gotten the leather pants in the mail, and I've, ema I've emailed the leather man twice with nothing back, and I'm like, girls, those are paid for. <laughs> I but... think it's fantastic, though. Nothing says quarantine at home like leather pants. <laughs> Listen up, you gotta keep it spicy, and we are keeping it spicy. <laughs> Well, so speaking of quarantine fashions, I, I see you by the pool a lot out in the Hamptons. You know, I mean, I, I, if there's too much clothes on, I wonder what's happening with you. Like, I, you know, like maybe a cutoff sweatshirt, a mid-drift. Oh, uh, <laughs> go ahead. So literally, I packed mostly like crop top sweatshirts and crop top t-shirts and like a lot of sweats. And the best is, um, my boyfriend loves to pull down my shirt and, and I, I literally, I'm like, it's a crop top. Like, it's not a shirt. Yeah. Like, it's not going <laughs> to cover my midriff. Yeah. And like, my mom has come and she's like, Nick, put on a shirt. I'm like, mom, it's a crop top. Live with the crops. I know. Oh, by the way, I'm obsessed with Mary Beth. I'm obsessed. Oh my God. Beth. She's probably I'm watching. I'm obsessed with Lexi Jane. I'm obsessed with all of it. Because this is the thing. And like, we'll get into it. We have nine more questions. But I'll say this. Like, you share your life so openly. Like, I feel like I know Fran. I feel like I know Nardoza. Like, I feel like I know Oh my God. People, you know? You know what's so funny? And I've, I've had a lot of people say that to me. And like, I try, like, I will film a story 
and my friends want to look at it and like filter it and do all this stuff. And most of the time I film and I post yeah, because to me, that's actually being real and being mm -hmm. like live and in real time because it's mm -hmm. like, why are you editing what you're saying? Like say what you want to say and just go for it. I agree. Yeah. You used to have a catchphrase and I've, I've noticed you're using it less lately. And by the way, I'm using my phrases less lately too, but you used to say coming to you live. Right? Coming to like you that. live. Yeah. And that, but that's the truth of it. Like you're live, you're unfiltered. That's why we love you. So don't ever change that, you know, even though they want to like, they want to edit. I will say this. And I, I, I remember, and it's so funny. Um, I was, this was brought to my attention and so, you know, I, I feel I'm very inclusive and I like to, you know, always be neutral when I can. But apparently I was offending people because usually when I say my bullet talk, I always say ladies and gentlemen. And apparently I was offending some people because they're like, well, what if you don't identify as a lady or a gentleman? So now I always try and say ladies, I got like ladies and gentlemen and everyone in between. Yeah. Yeah. Coming to you live. I know. And isn't it funny? Because you and I are pretty progressive. We live. I like cities. to think. So. I mean, like, honestly, you learn like, something every day, right? Every day. Who knew that this one was offending someone? I mean, girl yeah. walks around naked every day. Like, yeah. I'm just like, I'm, I'm like tra-la-la Helen over here. <laughs> but, I, <laughs> but I also want to say this. I'm going to have your back because, quite frankly, if you and I are offensive, I want to say to those people, you should meet my father. That's offensive. Like, come Seriously. on. Seriously. You know? Oh, my God. Yeah. Like, love my mother to death, but let's just say she can... You know, yeah. she's a Long Island mom. Of course, of course. She can say some things, and I'm like, Mom, we can't say that. <laughs> I love it so I mean, much. and you know Mayor. She's, oh, I'm, she likes okay. to keep it We're real and raw. We're going your whole family, because I, your mother is so, I, okay, let's, question number two. Number two. Describe yourself in five words or less. <laughs> For real? Okay, here we go. Um, I'm going to say happy. I'm going to say spontaneous. Love it. Yep. I, I'm going to say, I said happy, spontaneous. I'm going to say loud. And I don't apologize for that either. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to definitely say, can I, I'm going to say life as in life of the party. Yes. I'm going to say that's it right. like that. And yep. then my final word is a two word I want to say with a little dash in between, and I'm going to say jump split. And I mean that, and I, and, that, and I mean that in the actual way, and as opposed to just being silly. And like, you know, I think life can be so serious, you know, like, do you and who the fuck cares, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I went to grad school on Long Island, on the North Shore of Long Island in Oyster Bay. Oh my and, God, I love Oyster Bay. Oh, I went to CW Post. I got my master's. Where so, Jennifer Lopez used to run on the track. Yeah, I, totally, totally. So I, when I was living on Long Island, I had such an affinity for my Long Island Italian mothers. So when you say words like, life loud <clears throat> this you know like that's italian long island right oh so, oh hands down did you get it from your mother like does it did it just absorb into you growing up the, oh i mean hands down i mean the best is when my mother and my sister get together it's just like you're looking at twins i mean even sometimes when i'm with so you know my sister knows my mom's cooking knows my mom's recipes cooks like her sauce and all that stuff and like Sometimes I'll just, I'll be hanging out with my friends and my sister is like integrated into my friend group. They love her. She lives in the city with us. We kiki together. And sometimes I'm just like, guys, like you're looking at my mother. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's, it's just from even to, honestly, like sometimes the way she dresses and she'll kill me for saying this. I'm like, Allie, like we gotta, we gotta just, you know, you look like mom. She goes, what? It's how I was brought up. <laughs> like, what so do you recommend? Good. Some Scotch thin red hair dye. Well, I thought she was older than you. So I-, I, I A hear... lot of people do. You're not the first yeah. person to say it. Yeah. She's very mature. She's 25. She just did, she just turned it on April 2nd. And I will say she is definitely very mature for her age. And she's a star. I literally, t I, I, I describe her, I go, she's like, this is gonna sound, this is gonna probably sound a little narcissistic, but I go, she's like me, but better. 
in yeah. the sense of how she's so inviting, she's so vibrant, and she yeah. she's a beautiful soul. I'm gonna say something about your sister. She has RuPaul's Drag Race lip sync for your life level <laughs> lip sync skills. I, she I'm does lip syncing like that. She really, honestly, I have wanted to put her in competitions. I go, Allie, I go, and it's true. And I will say this, and I, and I say this wholeheartedly, I am definitely not the best lip singer. I never try and own it and say, oh, I can lip sing. Cause like literally my sister has a gift yeah. and, and seeing her probably do a legally blonde moment or no, her, her, her number one lip sing is dream girls. I am telling you, J HUD moment, she does it. Yeah, so Stephanie says we should shout her out. So her Instagram is Lexi underscore Jane. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, we, and we love her. So Lexi everybody... Jane, check her out. She, yeah. and you'll see her. She's coming here from Memorial Day weekend. So my mother and my sister will be here on Sunday. And my mom's making her ribs. She's like, I, she goes, I want to make the ribs. I'm like, okay, mom, <laughs> make your ribs. Well, I can't wait because I know what happens. You two get together, the drinks start flowing, the music comes on, and Lexi suddenly is like lip syncing. She's doing she's doing split kicks. She's on the floor, like lip syncing on her back. She can like, move. I mean, I'll never, there was one moment she came out here, and do you notice in quarantine, like two weeks ago feels like two months ago. Okay. You know what I mean? Like when you're like, wow, like that happened. Like so, there's been different phases, and for the most part, me and Br Brian's my boyfriend. We've been quarantined out here. We, I mean, we've been quarantined. We've had people come and go who have been quarantined, who we trust, and you know, who are like family and stuff. And it's funny because, like, there was a moment my sister was out here. She was lip singing, and one of her breasts popped out and hit her in the face. And it was like a moment in time, aka Whitney <laughs> fucking. I mean, it was, and I like kind of missed it. And I look over, and everyone is dead. On the, what happened? And they're like, Alzina's breast hit her in the face. It's so good. It's it's. <laughs> It's too good. It's, uh. it's I'm obsessed with her. Everybody go check it out. And then everybody watch Nick's stories this weekend because there will it's, be lip syncing. You know it's it. It's true. And it's so funny because my family's that family, you know, like there's always that one who films everything. And I'm, and they're like, my, you'll probably see it. My mom's like, Nick, stop fucking filming me. I don't want you to film me. She goes, no, I don't want to do it. And it's like, if I get her a little tipsy, then she's into it. And she yeah. likes the filters. And I put bunny ears on her. And before you know it, she's like <laughs> Peter Roger Rabbit and wants to do it all. So it's just about getting the right amount of liquor, a good pool moment. And it's like, woo! I love it so much. I love it. I love it. Uh, question number three. We already answered it. It's how did we meet? So we'll go right to question number four. I love it. If money was no object. I love this question already. What would you be doing for work today? If money was no uh, uh It's going to be kind of corny. And it's like, I... Um, if money wasn't an object, and I think this is a job and what I'd be doing, but honestly, I would be a dad to like four kids. Mm. Um, I love, I love kids. I want to be a, you know, I, I want to be a dad. Um, I want a big family. I want twins. Um, that's definitely something I've always seen for myself. And I think it's just because my mother, you know, um, my dad passed away about almost 18 years ago. And, you know, my mom really is taking the reins and my mom showed me like what it's like to... And just have a family and just to do all those amazing things you do with your family, whether it's like coloring Easter eggs or doing fun. You know, I, you know, I was a cheerleader. I, my kids, I mean, I won't force them to be cheerleaders, but I will nudge and I will be the ultimate cheer dad. Yeah. But yeah. I would, I, I would have a great family and I would do amazing things with them. Yeah. I think you'd be a great dad too. When I when I see the dynamic between you and Dan and Lexi, I think, oh okay, they had a solid upbringing. Like you're you're yeah. the stage, you know. You know what's funny, and I've had people say to me when they're just like, you know, it's so like I, I've had people reach out who have been strangers, friends, and they're like, it's so beautiful to see how close you are to your siblings and how like like for instance, I talk to my siblings at least every day, mm -hmm. sometimes multiple times a day, and my mom too, like every day, every other day. And it's funny because some people, they just don't have that relationship with their family. 
And, you know, I, I always say like this, you get one brother, one sister, sometimes more, one dad, one mom. And, you know, I always like, you know, try and make the best of it. Try and make them your best friends. Yeah. I also know like you can't choose your family, you know, and sometimes the family, you know, you, you agree to disagree, but I love that I, I, you know, they are, they're my diehards. They're my besties. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Well, the family I chose, they're my best girlfriends in New York. The family I didn't choose, I don't know how I'm related to them, but some of them are cool, you know, but, you know. No, I, I mean, hello, and I will say this, there's a lot of, and we're like, we won't get political, but let's just say there's a lot of family members that voted for a fun candidate who is currently in office. And, <laughs> and I laugh because during all of this pandemic shit, they've all bad-mouthed him, and I love going, I'm like, oh, just let you know, that's who you voted for. Yeah. You know, and, and, and they're like, oh, well, it was different. I'm like, no, it was not different. It was the same. Oh, yeah, no, it's the same guy. And they better not make that mistake in November. You know, better not. We do not uh, need a round two. Question number five is my favorite question. Oh, Past I can't or present, who would be most surprised to learn that you had a crush on them? Mm. Mm. Like it could be, do you want like celebrity? Do you, it could be a friend. It could be anyone. Anybody you want. Anybody you want. Past, present, or future. Who did I have a crush on? Um, okay, I will say this, and I'll, I'll take it from my childhood. I'll give you two people. That are just people that I fantasized about as a young lad. Um, I used to love Tim Allen. Mm. And I loved him in the movie Jungle to Jungle. <laughs> Do you know that movie? I don't. But okay, so it's specific. like a Disney Channel movie. And long story short of it, the movie premises is like, he's, you know, in New York living his rich, like he's a big executive. And he finds out that he has a son named Mimi Siku, who's like from an island. And he has to like go to the island because like the ex-wife, you know, explores islands in the jungle, all that jazz. And there was a scene where he was topless and I loved his fuzzy chest. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't love a fuzzy chest? I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I also used to love Mike Myers and Austin Powers. As weird as that is, I used to, I, I'm into hair. I like hair. Yeah. No, I hear it. I hear it. I, yeah. Yeah. I'll I go with Tim him. Allen. Tim Allen. Tim Allen is so, but even in like uh, Tool Time Tim Allen, he still had a daddy situation. Happen, oh, right? he was, Tim Allen was, Tim Allen was there. All right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Hilarious. I thought you were going to say Fran Joan because I'll tell you why. Sometimes when he's not looking, you'll zoom in on his butt in a pair of okay. shorts. I'm going to, I'll give you the load. giggle every time. I'm going to give you the load on Fran Joan. So me and Fran Joan dated. Mean, mean Fran Joan had the love affair. We we did the song. So me, so, okay, I'm, I'm going to blow him up right now. Anthony Fran Joan is my best friend of 10 years. And I met him at my job at SoulCycle. And the funny part is we were the rivals. We were like, who was like Queen B? You know, he was a fierce gay. I was a fierce gay. That was like, you know, we're button heads. And then I remember like he went through something and then we like, became best friends. And then of course, when it's, you know, I love when straight people think, oh my God, they're best friends, they're gay, they need to be together. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's what people love to say. But, and I will say that we tried the song and dance and, uh, you know, I, in, let's just say we are better as friends and he is a brother to me. And, and people will still say to this day, what about you guys? And I'm like, listen, I'm like, it is, it is a friendship that I cherish so much. I would never, one, not want to risk it. And two, like, we're, we're brothers, you know? Like, the, the love we have, like, we will, be, we will be there for each other till the end. Yeah. And there's a point at which, I have this with a friend of mine from Long Island. Um, and there's a point at which he started feeling like a sister after a minute, you know? Oh my I mean? God, like, oh. we're, we're, we're Judy's, you know yeah. what I mean? Like we, even like we, we watched the Judy Garland movie together and with like the one with Renee Zellweger and we were just like, 
you know, like we, uh, it's cute. Like someone's like, when we like talk to each other, we're like, oh, XO Judy. Like, you know, like he's yeah. my Judy. Even like with him graduating, I'm so mad I'm not with him to throw him one, an amazing graduation party. Like I've thrown him surprise parties. Like it's just like that friend that you just love and care about. And you just want to see succeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, your friendship's really special. I love watching it. Question number six. What movie or TV character do you most strongly identify with? That's a really good one. And I, I know the answer! <laughs> I'm going to say Phyllis Neffler from Troop Beverly Hills. Oh, that's so good. That's All right, because so it is cookie time, and I am a wilderness girl, and I can make <laughs> it happen. You're in like a khaki ensemble. Yes, and I'm with the hair. Henri, Henri. Uh, what is that? <laughs> I know it's my uniform. It's so good. Like, oh my, like, so I just got chills. Okay, wait, can I say one more character? Of course. I will say Romy from Romy Michelle's High School Reunion. Oh, yeah. And she invented post it. All yeah. right? All right. <laughs> I would say those are the top. I would say Romy for the attitude, Phyllis for the pizzazz. Yeah. Oh my God, that's so brilliant. Question number seven. For what reason might you? Oh my God, a sound effect mishap. Oh my double sound effect. Oh my for God. For what reason what? might you find yourself on the cover of a tabloid? <laughs> Let me tell you, man. She's she's. I know. There's a lot. There's a lot of things. <laughs> Wait, that's a great question. I love this. It's um, a good Stephanie came up with it, my producer. All Stephanie, producers. Stephanie, you are goals, honey. Great question. Um, on a tabloid, and like my boyfriend's in the other room. So, but like you know, I don't think he would care. I'm just gonna say like maybe like she was having like a Lindsay Lohan moment, and she was coming out of the club with like I don't know like. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to, I'm, I'm, I don't want to, okay, I'm just going to say it. We're real. Yeah. I don't want to say a dick in my mouth, but like a dick in my mouth or something. Like, I don't know. <laughs> like, I'm just being real and raw. Like, I, I, or I would just say like, oh my God, like Nick Spadaro caught X, Y, and Z. Like, you know, maybe doing something you shouldn't be doing, but you're like, fuck it. It's New York. I'm going to do it. Yeah. Well, it's one of the things I love about you. Like your stories will be like, I'm on my way out to Jersey. I'm exhausted. I'm on the train. The next story is you in ladies' fitness wear doing backflips in the parking lot, right? And then, like, <laughs> two hours later, you're in, like, semi-drag and yes! heels. Uh, so, like, it's one of the things that I love about you is the filter is gone. Oh, oh there is joy. no filter. I say live, filter, list. I will laugh you. So when I first came out here... You know, I packed a bag, okay? And like, you know, you're thinking, okay, essentials. So we did one trip back to the city to get more things because we knew we were going to back here longer. And I packed a bag of drag because I knew that would keep me sane. Even when Anthony came out here, he's been out here now twice. And we both say we wish we had wigs. That was one of our, we wish we had wigs mm -hmm. to feel ourselves. Mm -hmm. To Love be that. like, you know, to have that done. And like, my boyfriend plays the jams, like Madonna remixes from like Sound Factory and like, you know, um, what is it? The Roxy and just like, he has music that you can't get on iTunes and you can't stream. And we put it on and we, we have like bottles of champagne. I didn't drink this. I'm just holding up the phone <laughs> for it. But like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's just like wigs, heels, and I did bring a couple of dresses. Yeah. Well, I saw, I think I saw a leopard number near the pool a few days okay, ago. Okay. So I've been wanting a caftan for the longest time. And I wanted, there was one by Charlie, by Matthew Zing, but it was like $300. And I was like, don't spend that. You can get them way cheaper. Mr. Turk, also kind of expensive. And so me and my boyfriend, you'll love this. So we were out of lube. And uh, we literally, like, we went the other day and CVS didn't have the lube we wanted. And I was like, we're not trying. And we tried water base. And I'm like, this is why we need silicone base, even though it stains the sheets. Yeah. But so literally, he comes back with four bottles and I'm <laughs> laughing. I'm, I'm like, wow. He's like, I, I don't know if I should get, I, I thought two, but I'll get four. And I'm literally looking at a rack of beach cover ups. 
for women. <laughs> and I go, babe, I go, look at these cover ups. And I just got so like Charlie, you know, they're doing all like one of my favorite speedos of all time is my leopard print from Charlie. And I lost it in Las Vegas. And I literally cried when I got home because it was very Night at the Roxbury, um, you know, Steve Butabi, and I was feeling myself. So they just recently relaunched the Animal Series. I bought it and I was like, this leopard would match my leopard. Yeah. And he I... got like a sea foam kind of like that goes good with his complexion and his nice eyes. And mm. we literally surprised my mom and walked. She was like setting up brunch and me and Brian walk out. She goes, she goes, wait, where did you order those? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, we just got them. I go CVS 1099 on sale. Oh, that's so! I love that she I was live, jealous. And I packed two pairs of heels out here. Yeah, well, I'm like one of those heels is high. Like it looks like it's eight inches or so. The black one. So the black one is from like Purple Passion. I'm channeling like Ariana Grande, Dangerous Woman, and then the other one. People call it stripper. I call it Kim Kardashian Yeezy. It's got the clear heel and it's like a nude strappy kind of sandal. Um, here's the thing, I want Louboutins, like I want heels, but like you say to yourself, I don't know, like like that's a lot of money yeah. on heels that like, and I don't want to say like I wouldn't wear them all the time, but like, you know, for me, it's like drag for me is like, it's not, I mean, all, I guess like, first of all, we all dress in drag every day, as we would say, right? That's right. But like drag for me is, it, it's, I would say it is more costumey for me. Like I like to dress a costume, like a part, like I like to play something. So. To spend so much, I mean, listen, if, if I had actually, to one of your last questions, if money wasn't an option, I would have a fierce drag collection of like Versace. It'd be a Versace. Yeah. It'd you know what I stuff. love? I, you're like, I'm just a simple girl going to CVS for some lube and a leather or a leopard cap tan. <laughs> No, and the best part was like, I love, I got it. And I'm not gonna lie, it fits like a glove, makes my ass look great. And I'm just like, I'm like bland. Like The woman behind you has like bottled water oh, and Swedish fish. And she's like, they're way more fabulous. The best than me. was, my boyfriend was literally saying, he was like, he was, oh, she's gonna love these. As if like it wasn't for us. And the best was like, I think we're having issues and they had to come over and like, she's reading like on the screen, like lubricant. I'm like, this is great. I'm like, I'm like, sure, I'm having Steve's baby pizza for everyone. Like just it's so good, it's so good. But look, you know what? You have to be you, because no one can do and, you as good as you. you have and you to gotta you. have fun. That's right. Like my mother, when she saw me, she goes, "This is so you." I'm like, "Yeah." I'm like, I, even when I was a kid, I used to wear my sister's dress up clothes. You know, like a dress up box. Yeah. And let me tell you, I looked better in those clothes than she did. Okay, so so this is really a nice transition. Where did you get that sense of confidence from? Because if you're not in drag and you're not in a speedo and a midriff, you might be naked as we know from the raw naked. So like, where did that all come from? Where did the body confidence come from? You know what's, you know you what's funny and, and I, I've, been, I've been asked this and people are like, where does your confidence come from? Like, and I think that's something and I will say this and it goes back to, first of all, my dad was a nudist for the most part. Um, like I grew up with my dad, you know, being naked around the house. Um, my dad grew up wearing Speedos. My dad used to wear a, um, a yellow and black Speedo and used to call him the Bumblebee. Wow. And I'll never forget, we were at the beach in West Hampton and I was with my friends. I'm like, dad, you're embarrassing me. My friends are here because he was in a Speedo. And lo and behold, who's wearing the Speedos now? Yeah. But I, I think I got my confidence um, from him and, and just, I don't know, I think I've always kind of beat to my own drum. And, you know, I think just from my mom, like even when I, when I wanted to become a cheerleader, I was the first cheerleader in like 20 years to try out. This is in Smithtown in Long Island. And, you know, I knew I'd get flack for it, but I, this is going to sound, I mean, it, I mean, here's, it's going to be really gay. I saw Bring It On, the movie, and I was like, I want to do that. I I thought it was so cool. I love the music. I love throwing up the girls. And I thought I could move. And I literally tried out. And, you know, I made JV. And I remember 
we roll up to the school and I didn't want to go out. I was like, I can't do it. And my mom, I'll never forget. She was like, what kind of mother would I be if you, she goes, go the first day. If you don't like it, I won't make you go back. Mm -hmm. And the first day I came home and I was like, oh my, you know, I loved it. I was a kid in the candy shop. I wanted to do the moves like, whoa. I love it. I love that she just supports you no matter what. And, you know, I don't, I, don't, I think we're okay saying this. Your brother's also gay. Yeah, no, so, so my mother has two gay sons. Wow. I mean, when I came out of the closet, she looked at Alexandra, my sister, and goes, are you a lesbian? I can't take any more surprises. <laughs> like, like, literally, I mean, I mean, for a while in my family, they called me a fake Fruit Loop. They literally thought I did it for attention. And finally, at a dinner table, or like, I, I literally had to, I was like, mom, I, I literally got up and I was like, I like to suck dick like in front of my grandma. They were like, in front of your grandma? And I was like, well, you guys don't believe me. I was like, I like men, M-E-N, men. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, guess who just joined us? My mom, oh my God, my mom <laughs> just joined. Mom. Um, well, before, uh, before she leaves, I just wanna say, I'm obsessed with you, Mary Beth, I love you. Okay, question number eight. White meat or dark meat? I do, I will tell you this. I do all meat. I love all meat. But I will say, I don't know how this is gonna sound because like I've been asked I've been, I've been asked this before. Like there's something about like, oh, this is gonna sound so bad. But this is my preference. And I like everyone and I accept everyone, okay? But I call it Anne Hathaway porcelain skin. Like, you know, Anne, Hath Anne Hathaway is like milk. Yeah. Like that complexion. Yeah. That on a boy, and they're really pink down below. Oh, and, yeah. you, know, you know, like, first of all, I love gingers. I do have a ginger thing. I love a good ginger. And I love, I mean, like, I like, I, I like it pink. But listen, I do like some dark meat too. Yeah, no, I hear you. Sometimes you want to, um, you know, take a visit to the apricot. Question number nine. <laughs> and moving right along. What is your curse? What's your favorite curse word? Oh, my God. In front of your mother. I do pull out. When I get, so when, she, when I get mad and I'm a little, I'm a little drunk. I'm a little like hitty ho. Like I will pull out. Um, a little creativity, uniqueness, nerve, and talent, if you know what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, like to say, I like to say, see you next Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, and, I'll, and then, like, and the best is, like, my sister, oh, my God, I can't believe you just said that. I'm like, what? She is. She's a cunt. Like, mm -hmm. I mean. No, and the thing is, like, sometimes people just deserve it, right? <laughs> they do. I mean, like, but I will say, like, I guess, I mean, I don't, I mean, yeah, maybe maybe I say pussy sometimes. I don't know. Like, yeah. that's really, like, I don't like, yeah. I, I wouldn't call someone a dick. I wouldn't call someone a cock. Like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> but like, we're, we're, like, we're, like, everyone, listen up. Everyone's a work in progress. Because I know, like, people can be like, well, that's derogatory. Is that what you think a woman's, you know, you know, private part is and stuff? It's like, no, like, it's just like, listen. We all get in the moment, we all get heated, and a word pops into your head, and you just get annoyed. And That's you right. Just, can I, can I, like, question, can I ask you, what is your favorite curse word? Usually it's motherfucker. Like, I, can... I and I'll usually say it like, motherfucker! Like, I'll <laughs> scream the last part, because, it, and it's usually just, I am, I am very much Amanda Priestley. I have had it. I am over it. You're fed up. You're done. By, by all means, move at a glacial pace. Like I, and I get to a point where I just have no more. My fuse is this short and it just You're done. In my mouth. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's funny. But I've dropped a C-bomb. I've dropped it, you know. So honestly, and sometimes like it feels good. Oh, so good. So I good. I love it's it. Mm. Question number 10, what is the last text you sent and who did you send it to? I don't, if I look, will I go offline? Yeah, you have to kind of just remember it. Oh, geez, like last time, I mean like, 
<laughs> I'm not gonna lie. It probably was to like my mom. Like, well, let me just think. Who, who did I just like? I DM'd a lot of people today trying to figure out this mic stuff. Uh, my last text, and it's funny because I'll probably screenshot and text it to you after this to be like, this was actually the last text. Um, I think it was probably to like my sister, to my mom. Could have been to Brian. Um, who was I texting today? What was I texting? You know what I've noticed is in this time, I'm way more of, I mean, I think all of us go like this. I'm way more of a FaceTimer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I, I FaceTime all day and like people, I go, what, what are you doing? Who are you talking? I'm like, where are you? You're home. Like I know where you are. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know what? It, it probably was. So today, um, Catherine Hurasak, it is her 30th birthday today. And mm -hmm. I, I said, I, I mentioned her in my, are you up this morning? I texted her, you know, I, I even, I sent her cookies. Fabulous. The jams, the jams. Yeah, it's so good. I love that. I love that. Um, and we got off topic a little bit, but let's go back to the Raw Nick S. So you have two pages, and the Raw Nick S is all modeling shots, and they are gorgeous. Oh, my God. Thank you I've so much. I've definitely seen your butt and maybe back of scrote scrote, but they are gorgeous. Nick, they're so beautiful. Like, you don't even feel like you're looking at naughty. I don't, I don't look at you and, like, have improper feelings. They're beautiful shots. Thank um, you. That how means did you that work with so many? So fabulous photographers. I will say this. So it must have been about like two or three years ago. Um, I was in a friend's bed who was a girl. Um, her name is Melinda. She was she was the manager of the Upper East Side Soul Cycle, and I used to sleep over her apartment. We would order in sushi and watch Queer as Folk. Mm. Um, you know, and I like we would binge episodes, 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 and I'll never forget. I would, you know, we scroll on the gram as we do. And like, you just see all these men who are like, you know, like models or like, you know, they shoot with photographers. And I was like, you know what? Like, I can do that. Or like, I think I said, I was like, I want to prove to myself that I know I can do that. Cause I think I have the confidence to do it. And my first photo shoot ever was with Tate. You, you like tough time with Tate, Tate photo. I think his last name is Tate. Tulier, I, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I'll never forget like being so nervous and just, it, there is something I love about being in front of the camera because to me, the camera doesn't lie. Yeah. If you're trying to fake something, the camera will see it. If it's not genuine, if it's not sincere, and to me, I love in the, in the camera, because here's the thing, so I, I get messages, oh my God, you're so sexy, you're all this, like, I think I'm cute. I think I'm funny. I think I'm bubbly. I got, you know, this, I got this, you know, Roman nose going on over here and stuff. So I love being able to really play sex and sex it up and <laughs> to show myself, look, like you can look like that and you can also be a funny, charismatic, spontaneous person, right? Like you can be whoever you want to be and you just, it just, I would reach out to photographers and be like, would you like to collaborate? And it's just been this journey. And the raw Nick S really came about, honestly, because of the quarantine. Mm. And it's because of, <coughs> excuse me, my mom used to say to me, she goes, Nick, we don't need to see your bits and pieces. <laughs> when I would ever post it on my Instagram, and she's like, why don't you create a second Instagram that is all your model shots, all your stuff? And I'd be like, no, because I'm like, you know, my main Instagram is like, my following and you know I used to think it would be take so much to like build up a new one and stuff but then it got to a point where I was like you know what I have nothing better to do why not let's just do it for fun and my best friend Kelly came up with the name she's like it's going to be the raw Nick ass I was like that's amazing like yeah <laughs> so I created it and it's been fun every day I post three photos from a different photographer yeah, and, and, and just it's just been like fun because I love that it's like it's I'm not like I'm not taking it serious. It's just all my work that I've done over the years, mm -hmm. and it's been fun just to see. Like I'm all about I love like for instance I've never bought followers. I've never like paid to have someone get me likes and all this stuff. Like 
if I ever make it in life, I want it to be because of me and my talent and what I bring to the table. Mm -hmm. And what I love about the Raw Nick S is <clears throat> it's just been all natural. And like just the comments and <clears throat> the followers, it's, it's been fun. And that's how it should be. It should be fun. Yeah, totally. It, they're beautiful. They're gorgeous. And here's the bonus question. Yeah, get a drink of water. I'm worried about you. I'm afraid, Nick, do you have a touch of the vid? Nick, no. stay safe. Okay. No. <laughs> we are clean over here. I, I know. I can tell you guys are, are highly isolated <laughs> in that beautiful house with that gorgeous pool. Not and there's been moments. Attention. There's been moments when people are like, you shouldn't post where you are. You shouldn't do this. And I was like, you know what? And I said this the other day. I was in the pool. I had my boyfriend next to me. My mom was behind me. And, you know, we were having margaritas. And I was like, you know what? I, first of all, I live in a four bedroom in New York City with no windows. I fit a bed and that's it in Hell's Kitchen. Granted, I only pay $9.50 a month, which is really great rent. But like, you know, I live by myself like, this is, I say this moment, and I, and, I, and I say this in all honesty, is I'm living a pretty great quarantine. I feel very grateful, but you know what? I'm not sorry about it, and I don't want to hide it, and, and I, I don't want to, like, brag about it and throw it in everyone's faces, but, like, this is what I'm living, and I'm so happy and thankful, but I like to think, you know what? I'm a good person. I try and put out great energy. I try and support people. I try and do a great job at my job. And I really believe in karma. And I just think, you know what? This is a moment in my life that is kind of beautiful in, in, a mo in, in a sea of like sadness and pandemic. And you know what? She's here for it. Yeah. No, you, you, as I said earlier, you have to do you because no one can do that as well as you. And when you stop doing it, if you try to cover something up, as someone who watches you every day, I'm going to be like, oh, you know what I mean? Like the first time I saw Brian in a story, I was like, oh, there's the new one. But I knew there was a new one because I felt it in your stories before. I knew it in your energy. Like, so if you didn't tell us that you were at his place out on the, you know, end of Long Island, we'd be like, why aren't you telling us that? I know. Even there was moments when I was, when I first started dating Brian. And you know what? I, I always respect when someone, because it's true, like, I, I love Instagram. I love sharing my life. I like to engage with people on a virtual level. Um, definitely more than most. Like, you know, my friends, I, I'm that friend that like has his phone up because I like to document. I even love Instagram. You could do the archives and you can go back to old stories because they are moments in times. Like there are some moments and, I, and I've saved stories from like years ago and I'm like, I'm so happy I have this. And I would, I would be at Brian's apartment doing bullet talk and people are like, where are you? You're not at your apartment. And I'm like, and I, I'd be like, Brian, they know, they know. Like, you know, it's, it's cute. Like, and I love that, you know, there's that connection that you can, you can have with people. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you this, not to bring up an ex, but you had a breakup about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago. And I actually had someone write me a message and say, did they break up? Do you think Nick is okay? People you don't. Really I will tell you, you know, with they, that relationship, they pay so that was because they care for you. You know, it's, it's, it's a and good it's, thing. It's so nice. Like I have, like so. I mean, that relationship, that relationship, and I, I will say this, and I've learned, and I think why Brian has kind of we we kind of like you know he strayed away from Instagram and my stories in the beginning was because I've lived a relationship on the gram, and I will and anyone's advice is like, listen, leave some things for you. There, you know, we are in an age where everything is online and everything is, everything is social, everything, you know, TikTok and Instagram, Facebook, all these things, even going back to MySpace, all right? It's just like, mm -hmm. yeah. there are some moments that can, because there were some things that were aired on Instagram, like you'd get into a fight and then you'd see a post about it and it's like, why is there a post about that? You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. keep some things for yourself because then then I think people feel that they're in your relationship and then they want to weigh in on your relationship. And it's like, listen, like, this is my relationship. It's just, you know, so I don't think when it comes to relationships, pick and choose what you want to show. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, for instance, like, when I have, like, 
I love to put Brian on my Instagram for like cute moments. Like I, so I love Ugg boots. It's kind of like a thing of mine. Um, and I swear by them and people are always like, you have Ugg boots. I'm like, they're the best. Actually, they're like my house slippers. I love to wear them with like a pair of underwear and a t-shirt and just walk around and I feel cute. And I'm like, I'm in yep. my Uggs. And uh, I just bought him a pair and like they were sitting next to each other and I and he walked out in them this morning. I was like, I was like, oh my God, you look adorable. Let me take a story. And he's like, no. And I was like, please. <laughs> I didn't take the story. But what I a- love about him though, is that he fits right in with you culturally. He like, it's like he was always part of your life. Like it makes perfect sense to me as someone that watches you. Like, yeah, Brian fits right in. He he really I I yeah. not I it's really funny when you think about I don't know when you think about relationships and I'm definitely someone that's always like you know who am I gonna marry because I like I said you know for me kids and family has always been the end goal so I've always like even when I like I've been on first dates and I've been like I'm having kids if that's not your agenda then like peace you know like yeah. or like I've always said like I've had I would have kids on my own and um. I don't know, like I, I found someone very special and you kind of like, we both have said to ourselves, like, it's crazy that, you know, like I went from, I went from dating my boyfriend to essentially moving in with him. And it's crazy because I think, you know, like, I mean, I've seen some relationships go through breakups during this time. And I think what you're gonna get out of this, you're gonna get some divorces, some breakups, I think you're going to get some quarantine kids, if you know what I mean. And you're going to get some relationships that end in proposals. And I think that's beautiful. Um, And I, you know, we're both taking this time and it's, it's special. It's been fun. It's been really, and and I think we wake up because we almost pinch ourselves because definitely you, you read the news and you see people who are just going through it. And it's almost, that's when you feel a little guilty that you're almost like living this, you know, fantasy. It's like people will ask me, they go, how's your relationship? I'm like, I go, I'm in paradise. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm living this almost like dream thing. You know? Like, it's. Yep. But it's your time, right? Like, and your time just happens to be coinciding with this pandemic, but it doesn't matter because it was supposed to be your time. And you yeah. Be like, you know, and, and we both have even said, we were like, I wonder if we didn't, like, if we didn't have this time where we were like together every day, because I, th- I think it says something when like you can almost just be with someone, you know, on like yeah. every day. And, you know, like, people, do you, like I never get sick of him. I never get really, it's actually funny because I feel like sometimes I apologize because he always wants to help me. And sometimes, you know, like we push back being a Leo over here, you know, she's like, want to be on top. Ooh, like, <laughs> It's just, it's, it's, it's nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you deserve it. I want to, I want to um, read one thing and then we got to wrap up because Stephanie says we have three minutes before we get kicked off. Oh my On God. March Steph. 19th, you posted this. Uh, March 19th is right when people started like flipping out a little bit about quarantine and you wrote, don't forget, dance, eat great food, work out, laugh and be with your loved ones. And I think that pretty much is the best advice ever. And it sums up how you live your life. And it's why we love you. So um, uh, we're under two minutes. Where can we find you, Nick? List all the platforms. Okay, so you can find me on my two pages on Instagram. I am at underscore the real Nick S. The yep. real Nick S was taken. So I had to add the fucking underscore. I even DM the person to get them to change it. And they never wrote me back. I was going to even pay them. Gosh. I know. We want to streamline <laughs> title. The other, um, if you want to see my model shots, a different side, I like to say the unedited, unfiltered version of the real Nick S is the raw Nick S. And I do workouts at the Real Gay Garage once a week. The link is usually in my bio or in my stories. You can swipe up. And they are 45 minute full body blast workouts. And it's meant to be fun, not to be crazy. Um, And honestly, find me in a Speedo somewhere. I love it. Darling, thanks so much for doing this. We have 30 seconds. Jim, I love you. And I look forward to our first like in person. And we're going to get, we're we're going to reenact the tarmac. You're going to run and jump on me and we'll twirl around. (laughs) What is your cocktail of choice? 
a kettle one and tonic, splash of lemon. Kettle one and tonic. I'll I'll meet you with a dirty martini. And oh, we'll so sip good. And gossip. Oh, I know. For hours, hours. All right, doll. Hours. Ten seconds. Mwah. Have a lovely evening. Love you. Have a great night. Thank you, you. Thank you night. so much. Bye. Bye.